Has Adobe changed the graphic design and creative industry forever? AI is here and it's in nearly all of the apps now in a big way. Last week, I was at Adobe Max in LA and I got to meet some of you guys. You know who you were, legends. And some of my other good friends in the design industry. Adobe's main announcements that I brought during Max and it's always a great experience and I'm always excited to see what new updates are happening. But this year was slightly different because they released some of the biggest updates to ever have happened to Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop and Premiere Pro. But all these updates and putting AI inside of Illustrator has left a lot of graphic designers like myself asking the replacement questions question, you know, are we going to be replaced? I always love new updates to the programs, but this year I'm not too sure exactly how I feel about them yet. But first, let me explain to you the biggest updates that have happened this year. They're big. What's got to be the biggest update is text to vector. You can draw a shape and you get this little box now that appears. Press generate and I'm going to just say no walking sign. And just like in generative fill in Photoshop, it will generate something, but this time it's a shape. It's an actual vector to shape. No pixels, just vector. And boom, it's generated a no walking sign and it's in pure vector and you get different options here as well. This guy has no head. I don't know what's happened to him. This one's probably the best. But not only that, you can generate a rocket ship with hearts for flames. Look at this. And this is just the simplest versions of what you can create. These are icons that were generated in Illustrator through Text Effector. And the most wild thing about this update is that they're all commercially friendly, which means you can use these for client projects. How does Adobe do this? Well, Adobe uses Adobe Stock licensed images as their modeling. They don't use anyone else's work without the permission, only licensed images. Text Effector is huge and you can also create entire scenes. So I'm just going to draw a shape on my whole artboard here. I'm going to go ahead, press scene. And we can create a rocket ship launching with the color background. Would you just look at that detail? It looks okay. It looks pretty good for vector work. That is pretty good. But they also added in generative recolor, which you've seen, which allows you to use a prompt to generate a recolor. So I can choose from any of these from yellow submarine. They all look pretty nice, but there's something even more crazier than that. I've got this image of a poster that I've been working on. It's not finished yet, but I like the look of it and I like the style. Let's say I wanted that rocket to be in the style of this poster. You can do that. I pick style picker. I select the style I want and it will tell me down here that a style has been selected. And then I'm going to press generate the rocket ship thing the same prompt and it's used the same colors and some similar shapes to actually generate the rocket, which to me, that is mad. Look at that. I mean, that actually looks pretty cool. This matching style means that you can use anyone's image though and any style. You could take your favorite artist style, your favorite illustrator style and generate something similar to them, which is kind of scary. And I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Here's another update, mockups. Do you remember when you had to take your work from Illustrator, copy it into Photoshop to create a mockup? Well, now you can create a very quick one to see how your work will interact with the object. This is a normal image of a can. It is just a JPEG. I'm going to select this and my work here. I'm going to go to object mockup, which is in beta and press make. Watch this. Illustrator will analyze the image and create a mesh and you can see my work has been inputted into the can and look at how it works. That is mad. Look at that. It kind of goes a bit crazy sometimes, but as a quick visualization to see where it should be placed, you can change this to color burn to see what it looks like. And look at that. That looks so crazy. We even have other mockups up here from Adobe Stock. This has got to be one of the best updates. Now this next update I'm pretty excited for. This is outline text. This is not editable text. It's all shapes. And I don't know the name of this font. I'm going to select this, go up to type, come down to retype, and it's going to process these images. And it will tell me what font it is, whether it's on my actual system install or whether it's on Adobe fonts. But what's even more wild is that it will actually revert it back to editable text, which is kind of scary. Those updates in Illustrator are wild and they still added even more. Do you remember Adobe Firefly, the text to image? Well, now they've updated that to Firefly Model 2, which makes humans look ridiculously real. It's That is scary, but also mesmerizing. 
I mean, look at them. They look real. Now, I didn't want to make a video just about these Adobe updates, even though they're really interesting. I wanted to actually make a video and talk about my thoughts as well. So feel free to stick around whilst I do so. But first, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video, because if you're a new graphic designer or even a veteran designer, maybe you work in-house, maybe you're starting, maybe you're a student. Well, you need a website. Every person on the planet, I think, should have a website to have their own creative corner of the internet that they can fully make their own to show their own unique personality and identity. With Squarespace, you have thousands of award-winning, fully customizable templates to choose from. You can even just basically create your own website on Squarespace. It's mad. So you don't need to be a web design wizard. You don't even need to know how to code. You can make a fully white-labeled website, basically. So whether you want to share your online portfolio instead of just posting to Instagram, which I would highly recommend you do, always have an online portfolio that is not on social media. Whether you want to sell your products, whether you want to now sell courses, Squarespace allows you to make courses and sell them, which is mad as well. It, it looks amazing too. Or you want to start that blog or case study bio just for yourself then Squarespace allows you to do that easily and affordably. If you want to save 10% on your first purchase with Squarespace, then you can click the link down below or use code Patterson. But here's a little trick. You can actually start your website before paying for it. They have a free trial. Just go on, seven days, you can make your website. And when you're ready to go, boom, put the code in and you're live with 10% off. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring and supporting the channel. So how do I feel about these new updates in Adobe? Personally, I like updates that help me do what I do best, be creative. I don't personally mind the text vector, but I don't think me and a lot of people will be using it as much as maybe beginner designers will or beginner creatives. Let me tell you why. Text vector and generative AI isn't very good at logo design. It's not very good at lettering. It's not very good at brand identity work. You can't just ask it to create a logo and for it to pop out a really good one. Most of the time, it is terrible. Number two, the finished work is never that good. I don't see AI work as finished when I see it. Although it looks great, there are some discrepancies. You see this? What's wrong with this here? You need to sort of clear it up a little bit. It, it looks great, but then you go into the details where the anchor points are. Yeah, it looks kind of weird, and that's been cut out of there. And there's a lot more anchor points than there needs to be. But to create works like this, which is what I like to do, poster designs, brand identity, hand lettering, all that, it's not very good at. So I'm not that excited for Text Vector, although it is a pretty cool update. I'm excited for updates that make my life easier. Like now I can just add an image into Illustrator and do a live mock-up, move the artwork around to see how it interacts with the mock-up and the object. That saves time. Retype is just a great update in general. Being able to take an image online with some text in that you like, maybe you don't know what the font is, throw it into Illustrator. And for Illustrator to tell you exactly what font it is or a close font to that is incredible. It speeds my work flow up. Even in Premiere Pro, they have text-based editing where you can remove filler words. So in this video, you probably have not had any ers or as because it's removed all the filler words. That speeds up my workflow. What I'm trying to say is, I like the idea of generative artwork and text vector. Is it the most exciting thing for a professional designer? I don't think so, because I don't think we'll be using it. Outside of ideating, outside of coming up with new ideas, or maybe just making a quick icon for something, like a no walking sign. Will I use it for like backgrounds or whatever? Maybe when it gets better, but right now it's not there yet. I can see the potential, but it's not there. I'm not all doom and gloom. About a year ago, a lot of designers were giving me a lot of jip in the comments. They were saying a lot that I am stupid for thinking AI won't replace designers, that within a year we'll all be replaced. People even made videos about me doing that, which is insane. I truly believe these new updates are great. However, we've only started to see the surface of them. I think this AI generation that we're about to explode into is actually going to increase the speed at which we can be creative. And I don't think that comes through text vector or you know, generative fill, even though it looks incredible sometimes. I think it comes from speeding up things that we don't need to do, like masking. Do you remember the days when you had to mask? Nowadays, you just click an object and it's done. AI has done it for you. 
Do you remember when you had to choose a color palette? Well, generative AI can now help you choose color palettes through generative recolor. And do you remember when you had to go and find that font or ask around online for that font that you've seen? Generative AI and AI in general can just help you find that font instantly. Time, time, time. So for me, I don't think I'll be using text effector all that much, but I can certainly see where it's going. It's interesting and what an exciting time it is to be a creative. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.